Good morning. Welcome to Riviera Presbyterian Church. Today we celebrate Pentecost, where the Spirit of God descends upon God's people. For our opening song, let us sing number 688, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. We'll sing the first two verses. Birthday cake, it's the birthday of the church. Happy Pentecost to all. Hi, my name is Missy Shiverick and I am the pastor at Riviera Presbyterian Church. Riviera is a progressive congregation whose fundamental belief is that all are God's beloved children and that there are no exceptions to that rule. If you are a visitor with us this morning, welcome. We are worshiping online. Um, for the next couple of weeks, and then we will also be offering a in-person um, worship service as well, but we will always be online. Uh, we realize the church has changed, and so we are adapting to it. If you scroll down in your worship bulletin, you will find a place to um, sign in and tell us a little bit about yourself, and more importantly, tell us if you have any prayer requests. We have an active prayer ministry and want to keep you in our daily prayers. Let us worship God. Join us in the call to worship. We have come to celebrate the birthday of the church. We have come to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have come to celebrate Pentecost and to open ourselves to God's Spirit that it might fill us. O oh God, help us to put our selfish desires aside and direct our thoughts to you, 
that your power might fill this church community and our lives fully, just as it has filled churches and people throughout the ages. Teach us to be your church and your people. Let us worship God. Call to confession. Let us call on the name of the one who invites us to speak the truth about ourselves and our relationships and promises to show us mercy. Prayer of Confession. Almighty and ever gracious God, we confess that we have failed to open our hearts to the power of your spirit. We continue the divisions of Babel, speaking in tongues that confound rather than heal, separate rather than unite. Though we are not deserving, we pray for the gift of community that confirms your presence among us. Restore our fractured lives that we, with one voice, may ever give you thanks and praise. Amen. Assurance of Pardon. People of God, body of Christ, we are siblings together. The Spirit of God's truth comes upon creation and upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the authority of the Church, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven. Be at peace with one another because of God's mercy. Amen. Good morning, my friends, and welcome to today's children's sermon. Have you noticed that we're all wearing red today? Have you noticed that there are red pyramids behind me? Do you know why? Do you remember why? What do we celebrate today? Well, today we celebrate Pentecost. And Pentecost is what is considered to be the church's birthday. So today is basically a giant birthday party. And red is a very happy party color, wouldn't you say? I think so. So what happened at the first Pentecost was that there were all these different Jewish Christians from all over the known world, and but they all spoke in different languages. So you had some speaking Greek, some speaking, I don't know, other languages, right? And they all gathered together and they couldn't understand each other until God said, I'm gonna pour out my Holy Spirit and God poured out the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon them. It said they looked like flames of fire and all of a sudden they could understand each other. So it's as if I were talking or I was hanging out with someone from China and they're speaking to me in Chinese and I'm like, oh, I don't know what you're saying. Mm. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes and I understand. I'm like, yes, yes. And same thing with them. Maybe they weren't understanding me in English. Then all of a sudden, they understand what I'm saying. So it's as if maybe you have someone in your class who speaks another language, maybe French or Spanish, and you don't understand. Imagine all of a sudden understanding that language. That's what happened at Pentecost, which is amazing and just this really, really, really cool miracle. Well, after that happened, we hear that the church exploded and went to different parts of the world. That's why later on in the Bible, we have letters to the church in Italy, in Greece, in Turkey, the church started to explode. So a lot of churches in the Northern Hemisphere and in the Southern Hemisphere celebrate the church's birthday today. So I'd like to celebrate with you. So I'd like to sing happy birthday to the church. And then I'd like us to blow out this candle together. Can you do that? Awesome. So join me in singing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. So at the count of three, blow out the candle with me. One, two, three. Happy birthday, church. So throughout this week, every time you see the color red, I want you to remember that it's the church's birthday and the church is all over. And that God is powerful and can help us to understand different languages and that the Holy Spirit is with us. I'm very excited about that. So my friends, happy Church's birthday to you. I hope to see you 
at the Zoom call at the Narnia reading. And next week, I hope to see you in person. I can't wait to see you in person. If I haven't met you, I'm gonna be even more excited. So anyways, you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and I hope I get to see you soon. Take care, my friends. Bye. For our children's time response, let us sing Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. We'll play it once instrumentally and then sing it two times through. Please join with us. Join me now in the prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come again. As long ago you inspired, astonished, and confused people, come to us now. Fill our ears with the sound of your breath. Fill our eyes with the brilliance of your presence in each other and fill our hearts with your good word. Amen. Listen now to a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter two, the Pentecost story. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughter shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. verses 31 through 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Confession of 1967. In each time and place, there are particular problems and crises through which God calls the church to act. The church guided by the Spirit, humble by its own complicity and instructed by all attainable knowledge, seeks to discern the will of God and learn how to obey in these concrete situations. God has created the peoples of the earth to be one universal family. Several weeks ago, I shared with you that a group of interfaith clergy who serve congregations in the city of Coral Gables have come together to challenge and hopefully change a decision that was made by the mayor and city commissioners earlier this year not to approve My Miami-Dade County renaming Dixie Highway the Harriet Tubman Highway. Realizing the racial undertones of the name Dixie and the memory of our history of slavery that it invokes, it was seen as an important change to be made as we combat institutional racism. To change the name in Miami-Dade, every municipality within the county must agree to the change. And unfortunately, Coral Gables um, 
was the only municipality not to vote in agreement. So a, this group of clergy, which included myself and our two parish associates, wrote a letter to the mayor and the city council members, and it will be on the city council agenda for another vote on Tuesday. Well, it is our goal that we will soon travel under the sign that's saying the Harriet Tubman Highway when we cross Route 1 during our daily travels. And then two weeks ago, the Board of Trustees of University of Miami, realizing that names are powerful, looked at the names on its buildings and streets and are changing a few whose names evoke the same memories of oppression and bigotry that the world Dixie does. These are bold steps for an institution to take. Surely changing tradition in a university will evoke negative as well as positive feedback. And I bring these two stories up to share that sometimes we need to stir things up a bit and state the uncomfortable to achieve a result which is desirable. And as a follower of a God who spoke of justice and righteousness, we know that we too must confront and try to change what is contrary to our God. And Jesus was no stranger to this. He boldly spoke to authorities and denounced their actions. He preached an ethic which conflicted with the powers that be of his day. He, well, when we think of it, his ministry was actually to make us a little uncomfortable. A fellow clergy posted a meme the other day which brought this home to me. There were two pictures of Jesus. One was the white man with the blue eyes and was labeled colonizer Jesus. And the other one was named historical Jesus. One was white and the other one was Middle Eastern and brown skinned. One was Christian and the other was Jewish. One was patriotic and the other was colonized by Rome. One preached justice through retribution, while the other preached justice through restoration. One died for your sins, while the other was killed by the church and state. One sends sinners to hell, while the other was a friend of sinners and outcasts. One is silent in the faces of oppression, while the other liberates the oppressed. One condemns sinners, while the other critiques religious people. One endorses church and state, while the other subverts empire. One is a king, and the other one is a homeless man and a child refugee. One upholds the traditional family unit, while the other had half siblings. And finally, one endorses holy war, while the other is nonviolent. And there's a lot of truth to this, and it's painful. The Jesus a lot of us Christians want is not the Jesus of the gospel and not the one that the gospel writers wrote about. But the truth is, biblical Jesus that we follow is a pretty bold fellow, and he spoke against the authorities of his time. He was more than just a burr in the saddle of the Jewish authorities and the Roman government. He was trouble with a capital T. In the scripture that was read this morning by Barbie, the Pharisees come to warn Jesus that he was in deep trouble and he should stop what he's doing and flee before Herod's men come to kill him. And instead of heeding their warning, he instead assaults with words of both Herod and the Pharisees that came to quiet him. He was a prophet speaking what authorities did not want to hear, and he was a rebel to those whose powers and agendas he attacked. Jesus spoke truth to power and was not afraid to confront the difficult issues of his day. It kind of makes you think about the issues of our day. Number one, racism is pulling our society apart and it needs to be addressed. 
too, our country's politics, whether it's the schism between the Republicans and the Democrats or the Republicans and the Trump Republicans that is divided and not unifying us as a country. And number three, the violent disaster that's taking place this week in the Gaza Strip between, the, is, between Israel and the Palestinians. And finally, number four, we have made a huge mess of the climate of our planet. There is a lot of work to be done, and we need to focus on work, on the work and understanding of reconciliation, big time. And this is a lot of work that needs to be done and it overwhelms us at time. But we're a people that follow an ethic and a life of a person who is not afraid to confront power. We model our ministries and mission after a person who is not afraid to live a prophetic life. So let's start by speaking out. Let us boldly state the truth. There is another pandemic killing God's children, and it's called racism, and we have to state that is a truth. And let us scream out another truth. There's a huge sickness in our country of mistrust, and we have to seek middle grounds. And here's a yet another truth. There's no excuse for violence. It's not a solution. The reality is, when elephants fight, it's the grass that withers. And finally, let us speak out and scream out the prophetic truth that our planet is indeed at risk. The church is asked to seek reconciliation, and in doing so, we must be a prophetic community that works for justice, responds in compassion, speaks truth to power, and confronts difficult issues. Amen. Prayers of the People and Lord's Prayer. You give us prophets, holy God, to cry out for justice and mercy. Open our ears to hear them and to follow the truth they speak, lest we support injustice and seek to secure our own well-being. Give prophets the fire of your word, but give them love as well. Though they are called to speak in your name, help them never to forget that they stand with us before you and follow an ethic of love taught by your son who also taught us when we prayed to pray in this fashion. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I thought for the announcements this morning, I would sit here next to this beautiful flower arrangement that was made by John German for Pentecost. Um, thank you for making it, John. Um, it is beautiful. I wanted us all to enjoy it. I have a few announcements for this Sunday. Um, the first is that this Wednesday is the um, last of the Mission SDG Adult Education Hours, and it, it please come. They are, have been wonderful. You need not have been at any of them to participate in them. Each one is different. They're, the self, they're, they're about the self-development goals put out by the UN um, each year. And also the big news is um, the session at its session meeting last Tuesday night voted that to also offer in-person worship. So beginning the first Sunday in June, we will be not just online, but we will be live streaming. We will be having Zoom uh, worship and we will be in person. So you can either, you can decide how you want to worship and still be a part of the community. I will be finishing up my um, book series with uh, the, with children's books at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings um, next week. 
and it, the, the book is so timely and it's so relevant to all people. Um, it is a message of peace and so it is written, it's a, actually a song too, and it's um, written by a an, an, an Muslim young man and uh, we will get to hear the song and end the book. It is now time for us to contemplate our gifts to the church. If you are a member of another church, by all means, please give your offering or tithes to your home church. But if you are a member of this community, it is now time to contemplate your, your gift to us. Here is the call to offering. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit sent to us to increase our compassion and to make us glad to spread the good news as we care for those in need. So we enter into the discipline of giving of our tithes and offerings, asking that the Holy Spirit works through us in your name. Amen. It's a birthday time. It is time to celebrate the birthday of the church, the church that makes us into a community that we call Riviera, that calls us to do God's ministry, to be prophetic, to go out and, and speak truth in love about what's going on, and to know that we follow the ethic of a person who promoted peace, promoted love, and promoted equality for all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make the face to shine upon you and give you peace, both now and in life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us. On this Pentecost Sunday, let us close our celebration by singing 291. Spirit, spirit of gentleness. We'll sing the first two verses. Please join with us. <laughs> 